Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. He drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The Conclave Bible. Data links. Earth 2060. A small group of colonists leaves the ravages of Earth for a distant planet orbiting Alpha Centauri's primary star. Their ship, the United Nations starship Unity, carries them on their journey to a new world and a new hope for humankind. Along the way, a reactor malfunction damages the Unity, precipitating a crisis among the ship's seven most powerful leaders. As they enter the Alpha Centauri system, the crew splits into seven distinct factions, divided not by nationality, but by ideology and their vision for the new world. After the ship breaks apart, the seven leaders guide their chosen crew down to the surface of planet, seeking their destiny beneath an alien sky. Hey, it's Entheogen, and welcome back to Strategen, our ongoing retrospective of some of video games' classic strategy games. Flashing back to the end of the last millennium, we find ourselves partying like it's 1999, because it is. For that's the year that our current series game, Fire Axis Studios' Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, was released. Unlike our previous entry, Age of Empires, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, or Smack as it's called by its fans, is what's known as a turn-based strategy game. In turn-based strategy, each player, including the computer, takes a turn to move all units and perform all actions, very much like a board game. This produces a slower-paced style of play that allows the player to focus more on grand strategy rather than in-the-moment tactics. Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri was regarded at the time as an unofficial sequel to the classic Civilization II because it picks up where one of the endings of Civ II leaves off, with humanity embarking on a voyage between the stars to a new homeworld on a planet orbiting our nearest celestial neighbor Alpha Centauri. As that cutscene we just watched explains, things do not go according to plan. We face a rough existence on a brave new world. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to know, know about Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri is that it's a, it's a turn-based strategy game. So in turn-based strategy games, there aren't, I mean, they have a thing called scenario here, but there really aren't any scenarios. It's pretty open-ended. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do start game. Uh, we're going to use a make a random map. And since I don't want to have a huge long game I'm gonna do the standard planet uh, pick a difficulty level I'm gonna pick the I mean I'll pick specialist I've played this game before uh, play with standard rules okay and then the, so there are seven factions um, each one of them represents a certain type of ideology which is an interesting choice compared to you know a lot of games like Civilization or um, Starcraft, something like that, where you're picking a faction based on ethnicity or on nationality. Here, it's based on you know the the ideology that you want to have dominate the new world that you've discovered. Um, and our choices are Gaia's stepdaughters. They're sort of the Green Party, the environmentalists. 
Uh, that's Deidre Sky. She's the leader. Uh, you have the Human Hive, who are sort of a totalitarian communist slash fascist society, and Shenji Young is the uh, party leader. You have um, or faction leader. You have the University of Planet. They're kind of like mad scientists. They just want to do research. And uh, Proker Zaharov is the faction leader there. Morgan Industries. They're like the the sort of the mega corporation, you know, purely for profit. And their their faction leader is uh, Nabudike Morgan. Then you have the Spartan Federation. They are survivalist, warlike guys. Um, uh, Corazon Santiago is the, the faction leader there. You have the Lord's Believers, who are basically a religious group. And Miriam Godwinson is the leader. And then you have the Peacekeeping Forces, who are the nice guys, who uh, end up getting stomped in every game. And their leader is uh, Provin Lao. I'm going to be, I like to be, um, we're going to be University of Planet, because we get bonuses to our research. So we'll hit OK. The substructure of the universe regresses infinitely toward smaller and smaller components. Behind atoms we find electrons, and behind electrons quarks. Each layer unraveled reveals new secrets, but also new mysteries. Academician Prokhor Zaharov, for I have tasted the fruit. Yeah, so every leader has their own little quotes. So you're going to have these quotes throughout the game. I'm going to change my name to Entheogen. And I'm a, man, I'm, a, I'm a guy, so you want to stay a guy? Okay. Uh, in Theogen, a new era of struggle and opportunity awaits you. The UN Starship Unity has arrived on the Alpha Centauri system after a 40-year voyage. All contact with Earth has been lost. After Captain Garland's assassination by an unknown assailant, the crew mutinied and split into seven factions, each seizing control of one of the Unity's colony pods. You now shape the destiny of your university faction, which has just made planet fall. Okay. So there's us. Okay, so we're going to do University Base. This is going to be the first base. Um, and since this is an open-ended episode, open-ended game, I should say, each instead of playing one six-hour-long episode, I'm going to break it up into, uh, instead of cutting it off at the end of a scenario, it'll be cut off at every half an hour, approximately. Um, so our, your colony pod has crash-landed on Alpha Centauri. Its stores have been used to found your first base, University Base. You can use the Scout Patrol unit, which is now active, to explore the surrounding area. It can also be used for defense if necessary. If this is your first time playing Alpha Centauri and you'd like a tour of the interface, click the tour button uh, now. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll show you how to do it. So this guy is active because he's the one who's flashing. Um, you can get a little details about him. He's um, green, meaning he's not experienced. Um, he's got one move available for him. He's got no orders at the moment. He's got one, 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 and that's... Um, I think it's attack, defense, and then like psychic defense. This tells you, this little block here tells you a little bit about the square that you're standing in. This here tells you all, if you look at this little bar here, we'll show you all of the units that are in that square. Um, this tells us about the current mission year stuff. We're getting 50% economy, 0% psychic, and 50% labs per turn. So every six turns, we're going to have a new discovery. Um, we're in a good position here because you'll notice that We've got these little things here, these little mines, they're pods. Um, right now we can only see a little square here, but you can see there's a lot more of the map to explore. And you'll notice that unlike a lot of other maps, there's this has actually got a, um, unlike a lot of other games, this has got like isomorphic terrain where you can go over it where it's actually raised. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch on to our um, university base. So I clicked on it, just one click will pull it up. Um, the base control screen allows you to control the production and economic growth of your base, university base. Click the tour button for more details. I don't want to, or I'll, do, I'll tell you all about it. Um, so what we've got is we've got some options. We've got a governor in the base. I'm gonna, um, so the governor's active now, he's no longer active. And each of these options, explore, discover, build, or conquer, will tell you a little, will give you a different focus for the base. This base will prop, will, focus on doing something different depending on which of these you pick. Explore will do things like creating colony pods. Discover will um, work on researching stuff. So it says, um, here you go, if I, if I uh, hover over it, explore, scouts, colony pods, transport, discover will be projects, prototypes, probes, and network nodes. I'll explain what all those are later. Build, it builds base facilities, and then conquer, it builds military units and command centers and so forth. So let's break down a little bit what's going on in this screen. 
So this, this upper part here gives us a map of our base and the land it controls. Um, you'll notice that it says that there's a 1 next to our base. That means that our base has a population of 1. Um, the base, I think the max on this is like 24. If I can remember probably so 1 is the lowest, obviously. Actually, 0 is the lowest. You can have a 0 population base, which is a base that's been destroyed. Um, then you'll notice that there are, there's like a little apple, and then like a, I think it's an apple, and then there's like a gem, and then there's an apple here with two on it, and then a gem, and then a little, looks, looks like a little sun, right? The apple means it's producing food, basically. The gem means it's producing minerals. The sun means it's producing energy. And those are, those are settlers, right? If I take the, if I click on that, it'll remove one settler, and then I can put them someplace else. Right, because we've got two, I mean, they're, they're sort of two workers, right? So I'm just going to keep them there. Up in the upper left corner, you see where something that says nutrients. Basically, what that is, is you're generating nutrients through your base. Every um, turn, you'll add nutrients to this little count. When it gets full, you'll your base will increase in size. You'll notice that when I take this one away up here, one of these, one of these little workers away, it says that the growth is stagnant. We're not producing enough nutrients to have a surplus to grow our population, it'll just be the same. If I remove both, it'll um, well, actually put both on there. But if I were to remove everybody, you can actually have negative nutrients, in which case after a period of time, the population will um, shrink. You can see the same information here. Nutrients, we're, we're manufacturing four, but using two. So we got a two, plus two surplus. Same with minerals, two. We're manufacturing, we're not using any energy, two. We're not using any, so all three have a case of surplus. So intake minus consumption equals surplus. Um, over here, you can see our base facilities. We've got the headquarters, and we've got a network node. Your, um, as, a, as a university, we automatically get network nodes. And network nodes are great because they increase, they boost your research. Um, so that labs, 50%, economy, 50%. That's where we're allocating our energy, basically. We're putting one energy towards... Um, the economy, one energy towards the labs, we're getting a bonus because we're the university, so we get two. Right? Labs is research for new technologies. Economy builds up your wealth, and psych is, what, I believe, what keeps you happy, your, your people happy. So if you go to support, you can see this is everything, buddy, who's supporting that. Psych, we've got one person, one citizen, um, who's, a, who's just a uh, worker. Right? They're nobody right now. Um, we're going to go back to resources. So that's the screen for the each base. You can see we've got 11 universe, uh, eleven energy here in our in our wealth bank. Uh, it's mission year 2000, uh, 2101. We haven't done any eco damage. This number's going to go up as, the, as it goes, time goes by. And then you'll notice we've got it, we're making a colony pod, which is, allows us to build a new base. Down here you'll see we've got a queue. We can add things to the queue. It select, sets a series of production orders. Let's see what else we can build. All right, we can build a scout patrol in five turns. So it tells you what you can build. Here's a picture of it, and here's how many turns it will take. It tells you what it's for, and then in the case of, of units, it'll tell you the uh, the stats for the for the military units. Colony pod, 15 turns, expansion new bases, recycling tanks. Um, we want we can do 20 turns. It'll give us bonus resources, stockpile energy. You always have that option of stockpiling energy. Two energy per turn, minerals to energy. And then the Human Genome Project. This is called a secret project. If you've played Civilization, any of the Civilization games, do you have what are known as Wonders? Human Genome Projects are uh, is a project, a secret project. Secret projects can only be built once by a single faction, right? So if somebody else builds it first, you can't build it anymore. And they give you benefits, right? In this case, it's plus one talent each base, and the more talents you have, the more productive you are, and that sort of stuff. We're going to put the recycling bet tanks because we want more resources. We're going to insert it into the queue. If you put replace, it'll put it in place of um, whatever the slot is, I think, it, or it will place this. We're going to do insert. So now you see it appears on the queue. Recycling tank. See, watch what happens if I do replace. It'll change it over to a colony pod. So I want to do replace. Okay. Now, if you have enough wealth, you can do hurry, which will cost you a certain amount. Insufficient energy. Right, so I have insufficient energy. I clicked it. University base can complete col colony pod rapidly at an energy cost of 34. We have 11 co um, energy currents, credits in reserve. I can make a partial payment, which will speed it along. I don't want to do that. We're going to do, oh, never mind, I'm going to click OK. Okay, 
So what I'm going to have this guy do is I'm going to have him come. So he's selected, he's flashing. I'm going to have him right click. You can move the cursor here. Nutrient resources. All right, so we hit we hit that there. Supply pods seeded by your starship, the Unity, are items of particular interest as you explore the planet. You must enter the square containing the pod in order to find out what it contains. So we got more resources. These funny little salad-looking things here are, are nutrients here. You'll also notice that since we've moved our guy up here, the little number one next to our unit, uh, university base is now hollow. It's like a little uh, transparency there. That means that there's nobody in our base at the moment defending it. Now, if that means if somebody else comes along and were to put their unit into our base, they would capture it. Okay. Energy resources. So I'm just using the, the the arrow keys to move my person around. All right. So again, this symbol indicates abundant nutrient resources. If you have a base within two squares, it will be able to produce additional nutrients here. Nutrients allow you to increase your population. So let's go back to our university base. We're going to move this guy and we're going to put him here. So you notice now we've got a three on the apple. It's a much bigger apple. We're going to have growth even faster, right? Okay, so this guy here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to. Yeah, I'm just using the arrow keys to move them around. The symbol represents abundant energy resources. If you have a base within two squares, it will be able to produce additional energy. Energy speed, scientific research increases your wealth. So what I'm just going to do is have my guy come over here. I want to get all of these. So, energy powers your, your research labs and helps you researchers discover and exploit new technologies. You guide their research by controlling the fields in which they study. So we, get, we found a new um, resources. In which areas, so confirm research priorities, in which areas shall our scientists focus their research? Focus on a single area makes, focus on a single area makes discoveries in that area more likely. I'm going to say discover. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're focusing our energies on discovering stuff. So now we're going to uncover more of the map. Complete. Okay, so they built a um, one of these colony pods. I'm actually going to change my production over to a scout patrol because I want to have someone in the base. All right, so let's. So you'll notice that this guy is no longer flashing, and now we've got a new little flashing colony pod. University base has produced a new colony pod which represents the equipment and manpower to found a new base. Move it to an appropriate spot such as the one indicated on this by the second line, then press the B key to construct a base. So what we can do is I'm going to have, instead of using the arrow keys to move it all the way there, I'm going to right click, move unit to here is what I want to pick. And now it will take, for the next remaining turns, it will go here. Now this guy's flashing again, he's available for me to move, but you'll notice that my university base has, now has a two next to it. My population has gone up. We've got people on both of these little nutrient things, which is good, because they'll continue to produce a lot more nutrients. With my Q, now I'm going to put my recycling tanks. You'll notice that the number of resources to build the recycling tanks has come, number of turns, excuse me, has come down. That's because we've got more people producing more um, resources to make it. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to have him. Planet's atmosphere, though a gasping death to humans and most animals, is paradise for earth plants. The high nitrate content of the soil and the rich yellow sunlight bring an abundant harvest wherever adjustments can be made for the unusual soil conditions. Lady Deidre Sky, the comparative biology of planet. Okay, so our researchers have made a breakthrough. Periodically throughout the game, we're going to discover new technologies. Our scientific genius is going to be continue to be applied to the science we brought with us from planet Earth. And in this case, we discover what's called Centauri Ecology. Right, and we every with every unit, every uh, discovery, we're going to get a nice little, nice little clip from each of the faction leaders, or possibly from a great work of literature or something like that. Um, what this does is it allows us to build the weather paradigm. The next te two technologies we can research are Centauri empathy and ecological engineering. We also get new unit advances, including a terraforming unit, which is equipment informers. The equipment means that we can attach it to other units, and the miscellaneous is it increases nutrient production in fungus squares. Okay, so we're going to click OK. So our operations director wants to let us know that we have obtained technologies which will allow us to design better units. Would you care to see the new units our engineers are proposing? I'm not normally going to do this, but I'll say yes this time. Okay. So on the design workshop screen, you create new units which, to, with which to explore and conquer planet. Yes, it's called planet. <clears throat> you assign each unit a type, oh, each unit type a weapon, armor, chassis, reactor, and perhaps a special ability or two. You are then free to build begin building those units at any of your bases. 
If you would like a more detailed tour of the screen, click the tour button. Okay, I want to continue. So in this case, they're telling us we can make formers. These are the equivalent of the workers in Age of Empires or the little um, SCVs in StarCraft or you know any of those things that you can that you use to produ they're production guys basically. So you see, we've got a chassis, we've got a terraforming unit, we've got um, no shielding, no special abilities, and we've got a fission plant power reactor, which has power one, land one. We can later improve these. So we're going to say, uh, done. Again, I'm going to continue to work on discover. Okay, so this is a little bonus screen. Every time somebody makes the first discovery, right, in your, in your thing or, or any kind of major breakthrough. So mission year 2000, uh, 2110, university scientists discover Centauri Ecology, their first research breakthrough since planet fall. The Morganites made mankind's first breakthrough in mission year uh, 2109, which I don't know why they managed to do that because we're better than they are. So yeah, so as we as the game progresses, this will get bigger and more impressive as we make more and more discoveries. We've got this little um, light bulb there that indicates we made a discovery. There, close. Okay, so this guy, again, I'm going to continue to move him here. One of the nice things about this game is units can move through their own spaces. Production complete. Okay. University base has just produced a new scout patrol unit. Units can be used to explore the planet, attack enemies, and defend your colony. Now, you notice this little dude over here, he appeared. This is a mind worm. All right, these are bad guys. Right, they are the they are the equivalent of the barbarians that you, you see in civil, the Civilization games, but they are like a, this horrible fungus that will gouge your eyes out. Um, I want this guy here to say, um, to sort of garrison himself there, so I'm going to press the space bar, and that'll skip a turn. And then this guy, right? So perhaps the scout patrol unit should stay home to, to defend the university base from potential danger. Press the H key, tell it to hold here. So spacebar skips one turn, right, of his turn. Uh, don't show again. H will cause him to garrison himself there permanently, which is what I want to do. Okay, so we're going to make a new base, because our colony pod has arrived where we want to. This is actually a little close, closer than I'd like it to be than the, the university base, but we need to up our bases. So I'm going to hit B. Okay, so our new name is going to be uh, Bibliothèque Letters. Okay. So, so again, we got a uh, first uh, mission year 2113. Provost and Theogen founds mankind's first base since Planetfall. Bibliotech uh, letters. So again, we got another little boost there. Okay, so our chief librarian wants to let us know this wonderful discovery you've made. So again, here we go. We're here at this new base. You notice that the territory that it controls is mostly water. That'll be helpful because we'll be able to build water naval units from this base. Um, again, we see that it's not, it's, it's only got 21 turns to, it's only got enough growth for 21 turns. It's not doing very well because there isn't a lot of land for it to work on. Um, what we'll have to do is I'll have to build some formers and improve the land. I'm gonna hit OK on this one. Complete. So my turn is complete. All of my units have moved. No, no units need new orders. So I'm going to hit turn complete. If you can discover a better way of life than office holding for your future rulers, a well-governed city becomes a possibility. For only in such a state will those rule who are truly rich, not in gold, but in the wealth that makes happiness, a good and wise life. Plato, the Republic, data links. Okay, so like I said, another little quote there from Plato in this case regarding social psych. Now. You know, I mean, if you want to do some research, you can actually read about the library and what each of these things means. But we only really care about the practical aspects of it. Um, in this case, it allows us to make recreation commons in our base facilities, which will help keep our people happy. Um, it also allows us to in re uh, research the following technologies, doctrine loyalty, ethical calculus, and secrets of the human brain. All right, so, okay. All right. So you'll notice now that we've discovered some fungus squares. These are these squares here that have these little this, uh, sort of reddish pink fungus on them. As we'll find out, it's difficult to move through them. Okay, so see this, this sort of um, dotted line here along this thing? This marks the edge of our territory. Beyond here is either somebody else's territory. Once a man has changed the relationship between himself and his environment, he cannot return to the blissful ignorance he left. Motion 
of necessity involves a change in perspective. Commissioner Pravin Lal, A Social History of Planet. Okay, so we discovered doctrine mobility, which is a military doctrine, right? Um, it allows us to build a command center and build, allows us to build a speeder, which is a um, sort of a, if you've seen Star Wars, you know what they look like, little fast-moving vehicle, um, and allows us to research doctrine flexibility and doctrine loyalty. Okay, we've obtained technologies which allow us to design better units. Um, I'll have to do yes this time. So this is the Scout Rover. It's a little car that allows you, that's faster. Then you'll notice its chassis is the speeder, which is land two, right? So it's faster than our um, little uh, dude over here, our little scout guy, because it has, so he has more moves per turn. And our university base is now at three people. I'm going to put this over here so that it generates some, um, I want to do that. No, we'll have it over here. Okay. So I'm going to have this guy move down here. Mineral resources. So we've recovered a survey power from the Unity. It has located abundant minerals resources. In this case, the little crystal things, those are minerals. Okay, so this guy here, I'm going to have him hold. But first I'm going to change my what I'm building here. I'm going to change this over. Okay, so we've got some new units, and we've got some new things to build. Right? We can build recycling tanks, recreation commons, which has fewer drones. We don't have any drones yet or we can do command center. We also have a new uh, secret project, the weather paradigm, which increases our terraform rate. I'm gonna build a former. Okay, and I'm gonna have, like I said, I'm gonna have this guy stay where he is. This symbol represents abundant mineral resources. If you have a base within two squares, it will be able to produce additional minerals, especially if you build a mine here. Minerals help you build new vehicles and facilities. We don't have any formers yet, so we can't build a mine. It's also not inside our territory. Let's take a look over here. So we're four turns away from building the recycling tanks. I'm gonna go to my queue. Now you notice that on the other base, it was 100 turns to build either of these projects. Here it's only 50 turns. I'm gonna do this and put this in here and start a building. Oops, I, okay, we gotta do this queue. Insert. Okay, so now we got the human genome project hard at work in our base. Okay. Some units, usually alien creatures such as mind worms, can engage in side combat. In side combat, weapons and armor strengths are ignored and the attacker is given a 3 to 2 advantage on land, 1 to 1 on sea. Uh, morale level becomes quite important in side combat. Our morale is, he's green, so he's not, doesn't have very good morale. Okay, so that was our first instance of side combat. You know that little thing, the swirly thing that happens on top of him. That's side combat. Our scout patrol has, you know, has performed admirably and has now achieved disciplined status. So he's now at, he's now disciplined, but he's also okay. This unit has become damaged in combat. Damage is indicated by the colored bar along the left side of the status icon. Green represents light no, or no damage. Yellow and red show increasing damage. To repair a damaged unit, move it to one of your bases and have it skip its entire turn. And press the space bar. You may have to repeat this for several turns. You may also conduct a field repair, i.e. not at a base, but this is much slower and only effective if your, your unit has sustained more than 20% damage. A base of the command center can repair ground units in a single turn. Similarly, naval yards and aerospace complexes can quickly repair sea and air units. All right, so we've already pretty much explored this corner. I'm gonna do one more here just so we can get that thing, and then we'll move him back over to our base. Project it is every initiated. citizen's final duty to go into the tanks and to become one with all the people. Chairman Shen Jiang, Ethics for Tomorrow. So we've built our recycling tanks. So zoom to base control, okay. So mission year 2123, university workers under Provost and Theogen built the first base facility on planet at university base. So we've first been able to build a facility. We've now got it over here. And we're now working on the human genome project where it's gonna take us 40 turns instead of 50 because we built we built those additional resources through the recycling tanks. Okay. We go up. Scientific theories are judged by the coherence they lend to our natural experience and the simplicity with which they do so. The grand principle of the heavens balances on the razor's edge of truth. Commissioner Pravin Lal, a history of science. Okay, another breakthrough, applied physics. So this allows us to build the laser, which is a, a unit we can, uh, not a unit, but a 
sort of a component we can add to our units. That's the level two in terms of attack. Um, non we can also research technologies, nonlinear mathematics, high energy chemistry, and optical computers. Uh, I'm going to say no on this one. Okay. Production complete. Okay, so these guys have built a former over here. That's what the production complete means. This is now a level four base. Okay. Bibliotech Letters has just built a former's unit, which represents the terraforming engineers crucial to your expedition's survival. Formers can plant forests and farms, build roads, mines, and solar collectors, and later even raise up their and tear down mountains. Press Shift A to automate these formers and have them begin improving your colony automatically. Or if you would like to learn how to begin terraforming yourself, can put a tour button. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I want him to move to here. Okay, planting forests is an excellent way of increasing resources. Forest squares provide an a limited supply of nutrients, minerals, and energy in any square. This well-rounded resource output can be quite useful, especially in squares which are less suitable for traditional production. Um, I'm actually going to have him build a farm there. So go to the ter so right-click terraform, and we want to do cultivate a farm. So he's going to build a farm. Now, you notice this guy we had held over to his next turn. He's now at 50% uh, health. Uh, and this guy I'm going to change from having a former. I'm going to have him build a colony pod instead. We need some more bases. So I'm going to have him take another turn. See, so he's almost healed. If our society seems more nihilistic than that of previous eras, perhaps this is simply a sign of our maturity as a sentient species. As our collective consciousness expands beyond a crucial point, we are at last ready to accept life's fundamental truth that life's only purpose is life itself. Chairman Shen Jiyang, looking God in the eye. Okay, so planetary networks like the internet, basically. This is a really useful technology to have if you're playing the university because it allows us to build the virtual um, world and the hologram theater, which will turn all of our network nodes into the virtual world, will turn all of our network nodes into hologram theaters and reduce the, the unhappiness of our citizens. It also allows us to introduce to uh, research industrial automation and cyber ethics. Um, we now have unit advances. We can do probe teams which are spies, and we also have miscellaneous. What this means is that we can now do the planned economy type, and we can um, also have some of our people be librarians. I'm going to say no. Okay. So I think that's about half an hour, so I'm going to call this a video, and I will see you next time.